Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You're listening to Gary Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, what's up, family? What's up, what's up? Welcome, welcome to Late Night, Late Night with Jervis Live, Worldwide, and Kelly Holland out of Baltimore. What's going on, Baltimore? What's up, what's up, Eastern Shore? What's going on, family? Everybody, the nation, what's up, nation? Hope all is well. We got a very exciting show for you tonight. Right, we got a blue badge on here tonight. It's Quadra Banks, inspirational gospel artist. She's here to talk to us. She's come out of the Georgia area. She's here to talk to us about her, her journey. A journey in music, a journey in life. But we got Kelly Holland here out of Charm City. And our sincere, sincere condolences go out to, to all those that have lost. Friends, relatives, neighbors, co-workers, and celebrities. You know, your fans. Your fans. What you look up to. That rest in peace, Cicely Tyson. That's right. She was a great one. Let's talk to Kelly Holland and see what she has to say. On the broadband. What's up, Kelly? Hi, Lynn. How you doing? Hey, 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 Baltimore. Hey, everybody. How is everyone today? Well, what can we say, Kelly, to everybody? There's a lot of people checked out in the last two weeks. There was 85 plus that we all have known almost all our lives. Larry King, Hank Aaron, uh, um, Tommy DeSoda, and um, tonight, tonight, today. Cicely Tyson. Miss Cicely Tyson. Yes. Queen of acting. What a beautiful woman. Mm. We just saw her do her thing in a movie just what last year? Twenty I think twenty twenty release um um Honey Child. Honey Child been working. She been working, she's been working, and we can't take that away from her. Unfortunately, God has called her up to heaven. And all we can do is say thank you for the That's legacy right. she That's left right. for us, right? That's right. She's been here for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we just saw her. Matter of fact, my wife told me she was she was due to be on um she I thought she said Ellen. One of those shows, um they you know, uh, afternoon talk shows. She was scheduled. Yeah. Listen, Miss Man may have wore the finest uh hair and wore the finest clothes, but she was up there in age and uh Thank the Lord for her legacy. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah. It was that was that one that was a shocker. You know, I, I, I've heard Larry King was ill, mm-hmm. but I didn't hear anything about you know because like I said, she was booked for a show. Yeah, she definitely was. So we thank God for her and her talent. That's and, right. Uh, That's right. Yeah, That's and right. all the nice movies she played in. Mm. I loved her in Hoodlum. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, yeah. she was, she yeah. was good in that last movie. Um, that Tyler probably just released in his new studios. Um, I think it released in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Remember, praise God me. for Tyler Perry. He kept her working. Yeah. He kept her working. Yeah, she, she looked good. Well, we'll find out more. You know, we're not sure we can blame it on COVID. It just could have been some illness that nobody knew about. But it has been doing its thing. Yeah, protect you yourself. Wasn't in pain. Yeah, protect yourself, people. Protect yourself, and of course, Larry King. You know, I always admired that guy. He's interviewed almost every famous person that can speak English on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yes. And the Seven Hundred Club is going to miss him. Yeah, <laughs> and that man. But I think he has what, like five kids, eight kids, and I think they they under nineteen. Half of them. Oh, oh that's amazing. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I think he was in the 60s. I think he was in the 60s when he had the last two boys. That thing is ugh. <laughs> he left $50 million behind, too. 
Fifty million dollars. Oh wow! Is yeah. that unclaimed property? Do we go to the state of his residence? I think he. I think he had did recently file for divorce. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, I'm not gonna put it out there like that. But I know he has some stuff going on. You know, he's been married about four or five times, I believe. So, um, you know. Oh, welcome to the world. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> some people do it till they can't get it right, honey. And I, I praise God for them. That's right. <laughs> so, how was your week? How was your week so far? All is well. How about you, Batman? Yeah, just um, trying to catch up. You know, we had a road trip, had an opportunity to go out to North Carolina and visit Virginia a little bit and came on back to Maryland before the snow. (laughs) But we had a great time, me and my wife, a little road trip. We took Mimi with us and, uh, you know, we had a great time, a couple stops and some, you know, some favorite restaurants and just relax, you know, just relax. Had to get away. That sounds like a wonderful time, Batman. And, um... Not to keep going back, but at 96 years old, Miss Cicely Tyson did her thing. She was still acting. And so I praise God for her and her life and that more people can live to be as humble and as beautiful as she was. Right. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I had my trunk slam on my head earlier. So Ooh. <laughs> I come but that thing hurt. I got a little bump on the side. Like oh, wow. that wind that came today, I wasn't ready. I was like, no, 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 no. Mm. <laughs> I'm not ready. Yeah, we get yeah, we get in February. We get in February weather now. I mean, now we're getting cold. We went out there today. Yeah, Mimi had the, yeah, Mimi wore her coat today. I had to put a her her bubble coat on. She had to wear her big coat. <laughs> Big girl coat. It was cold. I know that's right. Yeah. Go, okay, Mimi. She ready for the weather. Yeah. <laughs> she want to just keep walking. They won't come back. Yeah. A little yep. cute stuff. Yeah, that wind was kicking. My son and I was putting the groceries away, and uh, I got caught by that daggone trunk. Oh, my gosh. My head hurt so bad, Batman, but I All am right. here, so you, ready to work. All right, Quadras. Uh, <laughs> Quadras is, 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 is that kind of um, guest that you like. She has a story oh, for yeah? you. Yeah, she has, a, she has a story for you, a big testimony. And, well, um, praise yeah, God. Yeah. I got a reason to be interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to like this one. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to love her story. All That's right, let's, let's let her out. Let's let her out of the queue. What's up, Miss Banks? How you doing? Welcome to Positive Power Late Night with Jerry's Live World and Kelly Holland. How you doing? Hello. I'm great. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well. How are you? That's right. I am great. Glad to be in the land of living. Yeah, yeah. How about that? That's right. <laughs> you can say that twice. <laughs> How about that? Well, thank you for joining us, Ms. Banks. I know you and I are not strangers. She she um she uh, graced us with her presence on um Merlin Gospel Live, so all the Merlinders got a chance to hear her story. So now Kelly hollering out of Baltimore, get to talk to Miss Banks. And Miss Banks is just not an hey. average social media. Uh, or 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 inspirational or gospel artist. She she's she's pretty special, pretty special. So uh, enjoy the interview, Miss Holland. Amen. Thank you so much, baby. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you, Quandra, for joining us. You may not be a stranger to the Positive Power Double XI family, but this is my first time getting to meet you, and thank you so much for being here. Could you please let our listeners know this evening exactly? who it is that you are, and lovely what it is that you do. I am the Quandra Banks. I am a gospel inspirational artist. I went viral 2017 all the way up to this year. Um, music is my passion. This is what I love to do. Everybody okay. know me from going viral and singing in the hair salon chair or going viral <laughs> from singing Better Days. So, mm-hmm. But it's bigger than that. Is, is bigger than the viral videos. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's Amen. Who I am. That's who I you am. You are the songstress for the for the kingdom of God. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the, only, that's the only way. That's the only way. Now, honey, I thought you was going to say a lot more, only because I received your <laughs> bio, and that thing is, is it is is thick. The, 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 the thick. So that was, <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. I want to yes, hear what you yes. say. Uh, I told them, I told them to put it like that, um, because I want people um, to know who I am. You know, kind of read up on me for those who really don't know me. But my 
my testimony is very thick. Also, yes. You know, the anointing, when you have a thick anointing on your life, of course, the story is thick behind that. So, yes, I want people to know who I am and where I come from and how I started out and, you know, how it just happened. Because, you know, like I tell people before, I wasn't raised in a church. I found Jesus in my home, but I went to church. So, you know, that that's the difference. But I truly, truly thank God. I truly thank God for everything that he have allowed me to go through and, um, and encounter and witness. But I went through a lot. I went through a lot. Being a single parent, um, being homeless. I died in March. 13th, 2019, um, I literally thought that was over. Yes, ma'am, my lungs collapsed and I went into a sudden cardiac arrest. I thought my life was over. They told me that I wouldn't be able to walk again, talk again, hear again. They told me that my brain wouldn't be the same due to the, the, the major impact from the cardiac arrest. But I'm here today. I'm still standing. I'm still glorifying God. I have a reason. I don't have a reason to complain about anything. Um, and I'm very, I'm the type of artist, like I, I, I tell people, I understand the big people and everybody that y'all used to, but I'm the type of artist. I'm very humble. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very big on treating people right with respect because not only did I die, I had an encounter and I went to heaven. Did you? Yes, ma'am. I, so, I would definitely like to talk about that. Like, <laughs> the afterlife is so, like, interesting to me only because a lot of times we hear about um, the wicked that prospers, right? And then God says they're only prospering right now on earth and they will never see the eternal life. And so I'm like, are you gassing me up for this eternal life like they do in some other cultures with people uh, commit suicide uh, type of attacks, you know, like, you know, I'm going to take you, I want you to run into this crowd with this vest of bombs on and you will live forever with all your versions in heaven. And, you know, like, are are you gassing me up (laughs) or (laughs) to say that my miserable life will be better in Christ? (laughs) You know, (laughs) like the day I die, I'm going to hover up to one of the heavens and be accepted. What are you telling me, Bible? Because you're confusing me. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and my feelings are hurt. So you actually went to heaven. That's what you think. I I, I had an encounter, um, but before before I even went to heaven, I remember as a little girl, I used to say, man, I want to visit heaven. I wonder what heaven is mm-hmm. like. You know, and I always used to say, like, I'm going to be this big inspirational person who inspires people, who, you know, who bring people to Christ, who who really just motivate people. Because I, I see good in people. You know, sometimes I, I know there's bad, but I'm the type of woman... I, I see good in people and I want what's best for people. So it's like God to to literally go from being young to, to being the older woman that I am to encounter heaven. Like it changed my life, my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 it's like, okay, where do I go from here, God? And God just began to just tell me so many things. And show me so many things. And what did you have to sacrifice in order to uh, reach that higher level with God? I had to sacrifice my life, me. I had mm-hmm. to give up what I I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. I had mm-hmm. to give up people. I had to give up things. Well, it's the easy transition for you because a lot of people don't understand exactly when you're called to Christ. First, you have to believe in him and understand that this is a mission that he has set for you. On top of that, listeners, you have to go ahead and make the determination that you want to follow God. And so you must make an adjustment. That adjustment is basically asking you to drop it all and love Christ and believe in him to provide for you and your children while you are enduring and committing his work. 
committing the work of God. And so in doing so, just like you said, you had to make some changes. And who did it affect directly when you made these changes to follow Christ? It it affected the people that I thought that was behind me. Mm-hmm. It affected so many things. Like you, you will just think that the people that truly love you like they say they love you really for you mm-hmm. until your life begins to change until God shift you into a place yeah where you can't call on nobody mm-hmm. you can't even depend on nobody because they sometimes don't God it. will bring you to a place of isolation where it's just you and him and that's the level God has to get us to in order to get to the next level absolutely and so many times people don't want to sacrifice they want to hold on to things, but they ask God for greater. God, can, can you bless me with this? Can you enlarge my territory? Okay, when God started causing that shift to take place, mm-hmm. we fight with God. And we we're do. not even aware that we're fighting with him. We're not ready. We, be we won't fighting. give it up. Mm-hmm. That's right. We, don't, we, we, we continue to want to hold on to what God is wanting us to release and walk away from. Because he's exactly. saying, I got greater for you. Right, but, but that's the thing. Willing? To that's give it up. That's right. That's right. And that's why they say it is harder for a rich man to pass through the eye of a needle. Are we willing right. to give up our, our our whatever it is that we're holding on to, whatever that may be? And it doesn't have to be riches and money. It could be rich to us. You know, you finally right. made it yep. to that status you didn't think you could reach and then you feel content or whatever that mm-hmm. may be. And so I can definitely... um hear your story and relate it to the word. I'm not going to say I can understand or relate to your story because it is unique to me, to your listeners, and to us overall. But I'm grateful that you're here with us this evening to be transparent about your walk with Christ and what it is that it took to be his disciple. And so we thank you for being here with us this evening and for letting us know that he had you on your deathbed, gave you an encounter with the heavens, and then made you follow. Why why wouldn't you? <laughs> right. Why wouldn't right. you? That's I a special engagement. Right. Really? I've always been in that place with God. Like, oh man, when I tell you I had a look, even at a at a young age. That's what I was about to say. Hit me with the story when you was young. <laughs> it was, I, I, I love church. I used to tell my mom all the time. I used to literally get mad at my mama when we we didn't go to church. Okay. It was always something. Even at a young age, I used to have encounters with God. I remember just being asleep, and and it was like it was a feeling that came over me. I'm asleep, but I it, it, it's like that and it kissed me on my cheek. And I remember waking up and I I came to my mama. I said, "Mom, did you?" Did you kiss me on my cheek? Did did you touch me or something? And she would say, no, baby. I didn't touch mm-hmm. you. And she would say, that was just the presence of God. Amen. So even, so even at a very young age, I always had that love for Christ. I Even even when I didn't even know who he was, but I felt mm-hmm. it was a feeling on the inside of me. I always knew that I was different. Even being exactly. in school. Because I always got picked on. People got they was picking at me because I was popular in school. I, I didn't mm-hmm. ask for none of this. I just had, it was just something genuine about me. I always could literally gather a crowd and everybody just listened to me. And I just Amen. found myself just talking. I found myself just singing and, mm-hmm. and, and, and just talking to, to girls my age. And That's then beautiful. encountering things that I saw my parents go through, my mom, and so many things like that. It played with my mind, even in school. I remember when I couldn't even focus. The enemy had my mind so bound to the point I couldn't even focus because I always yeah. thought something was going on. That's a, that's my mama. <laughs> that, that, that struggle of anxiety, that struggle of uh, depression. It kind of it yeah. consumes your mind. It consumes your thoughts. But um, I've read your bio, and honey, 
<laughs> listeners, you you ain't even get the root, the the beginning of mm-hmm. what it is nah. that Miss Banks <laughs> could say. All right, and so Miss Banks, I would just like to ask you, and I'm going to be completely upfront and blunt. I do not know a single woman um, my age um, and up that has not been molested in some type of way um, from the soft stuff, you know, the, the show and tell um, to the most horrendous um, of acts that could be committed into women. But you made a decision to put this in your bio. Um, at first, I want to ask you, why? Why would you even share something so tragic? Because that's part of my life. That's part of my growth. Mm-hmm. So many times we get so caught up. Social media, let me just say that so many people get so caught up in social media. And you hear people like, it'd be so many influencers mm-hmm. that talk about the good. But what about the bad? How can you really influence somebody on a good way, in a good way. How can you inspire them to be better than what they are now? So why not? Why not tell where I come from? Mm. Because anytime God takes you, God gets the glory out of everything. Absolutely. So if I call myself an influencer, if I say, okay, God, allow me to be the inspirational women who inspire women and men and children to to be better than what they are right now. Why why can't I talk about what I overcame? See, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants our mouth closed so we can't see the next person. See what you go Amen. through is not for you. It's not for you. <laughs> it's that crash course that we gotta attend so we can help others. And your platform is your way to reach out to others. And God blessed you with this with this gift of song. Um, And and that's your outlet. That's your outlet. And even doing interviews like this, um, taking your time out to just be transparent. um, That is also a platform for those that want to hide that don't necessarily know that we are out here. We we understand Um, we've been where you are. And we overcome the tragic part of it to the point where we can talk about it. Um, And in doing so, that takes the power away from the offender. Um, And so I'm grateful that you're able to talk about it. Um, But we have a lot in common um, uh, since I've been reading. Um, I'm definitely a Leo. And so those fire signs... Okay, okay, I'm an August Leo right <laughs> with you. So them fire signs, honey, honey. Listen, <laughs> we can listen. keep it up all day, boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> all day with our nasty nice self. But <laughs> <laughs> we can we we do both in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. right. We ain't trying to hurt nobody. We just trying to have a good time. <laughs> we ain't trying to hurt nobody. <laughs> We just living on the glory that God gave us. Hey, Amen. That's it. That's how we do. <laughs> that's how we do. We ain't trying to hurt nobody with our bluntness, but we can definitely keep the party hey, going. Listen, <laughs> listen. Do you hear me? <laughs> yes, I hear you, lovely. Um, but I was also a young mom, just like you. Uh, I had my daughter um, at the age of twenty. She was supposed to be born in September, which would have been twenty-one. But my my baby girl wanted to come in June. <laughs> <laughs> pull her little breathing cord out and come home right after my birthday. Like, I don't know what you celebrating, but your daughter is home. And so, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and then I was married the um, following year. Um, are you still married is what I wanted to ask. <laughs> no. Me I got neither. a divorce April, um, April 25th. Of 2020? 2020? Yeah. No, okay. Um, it was, no, I take that back. I'm sorry. Not April 25th, April 17th of 2017. 
Oh, well, you right there with me, honey. Mine was December mm-hmm. of 2017. <laughs> oh, wow. December of 2017. Yeah, we had to go the whole year yep, with yep. ours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. We had to go the whole year. December, December. Yep. It taught um, me a lot. It taught me a lot. How about that? That right there is just a whole nother piece of the pie. Um, I could definitely relate because let me know if this match your your overall thing. You you were happy to be the wife. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You were happy to be the family woman of the mm-hmm. of the house. Uh, you wanted to stay married, but this mm-hmm. one. This one over here <laughs> that's supposed to love us, be kind to us, communicate mm-hmm. with us, put God in a life. Them suckers wasn't cooperating, dang it. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But you know what? Like, What's even that? during my marriage, uh-huh. like, I knew, I knew that this man wasn't for me. But because mm. of the heart that I had. And I didn't want to shackle up with this man. I wanted to do the right thing. And I did love him. And I wanted what's best for him. But I did something that God didn't tell me to do. I didn't wait on my yes from God. That's okay. We don't always wait on our yes from God. Mm -hmm. And depending on the circumstances of the relationship, we act in our emotion. Um, And that's not always the best thing to do, but it's what we know because we were married in our 20s and we wasn't taught (laughs) what your trifling husband might do or might not do if you have a trifling husband like I did. (laughs) Not saying that all men are that way. Um, I believe in the greater good of man and the kindness of man. But what I don't believe in is narcissism, mental abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse. I don't believe in none of that. I don't believe in any level of abuse. So I'm grateful to now stand on both feet and say, Come on now. Come on. I'm strong. You know, God provided for me. Um, I'm not homicidal and Lord, I ain't suicidal. <laughs> you know, I'm making right. it and I'm in a new territory right. that I did not think I can handle, but this was God's will for my life. And he provided and he cared because of my obedience. So you can't right. have growth unless you have obedience. Come you on can't now. Have you better talk. Okay. Okay. Listeners. You okay. You cannot have that connection with Christ until you are obedient. And, but That's are right. you at the place like Miss Banks where she could just drop it all and follow God? I want to be. <laughs> I don't know about right now, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's definitely a process. It's, 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 a process. it's a process, but we we must be willing. Like some sometimes people they love to do what they do. Sometimes people know when they they know they don't have no business doing what they do, but it's a choice. They love. Sometimes we can't stop. When you love something so much, you don't want to stop doing what you do. It feels good to you. How about that? That indulgence. But, but what happens when your life is on the line? When you know that's you're that annoying. But that's that part of it. We we be so consumed in our in our trouble, in our abuse, in our in our in our struggle in the relationship. We so consumed and caught up. It's like if he treats me good nicely for 10 minutes i might just forget all that i've been through just to keep this man and that's how we treat ourselves women Mm -hmm. um when we are just fully what we call love for this person and i don't want to claim it's love anymore at that point because loving you is like loving jail loving you is like loving drugs it ain't good for me And I have to acknowledge it and accept it and realize that this time that we've spent, it's done. And it's okay if it's done. And let me move on. And honey, that step wasn't as easy as it seemed. That that took me about a good two, three years to get myself wrapped around. I'm not even going to lie. Okay. But I thank God for it all because it made me the woman that I am today. Yes. Even the more stronger. It made me even the more wiser. Right. 
And I want to so, ask you, do you take mm-hmm. all of this, in, all of this that your struggle, your background, and when you was in the hair salon that day singing for Christ, did you put all your heart into it and just sing freely? Or, or did you think, let me release something? Like, what was it about when you made that viral video, your first? Anytime, anytime I open up my mouth, my, my, the key is to win a soul. I don't even care if it's one soul. I don't just open up my mouth just to open up my mouth to say. I want to I wanna win a soul. That's my vision. To mm. win as many souls for Christ as possible. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not the artist. I'm not the ordinary person that, that's about competition. I'm not a competitive person. For what? I don't need to be. What God has given me is for me. Okay, in favor, and, and it's not to it's not to compete with anybody because what he have given you, that's what he have given you. You went exactly. through what you went through to have what you have, and I had to go through what I went through to have what I have and be where I am. So I'm I'm not. There's no reason for me to be competitive. Mm-hmm. But let's let's just partner up and and help each other out. You can teach me some things that I may not know, and I can teach you some things that you may not know. I don't Amen. have a reason to compete with you. Amen, amen. We serve a God that's that's of love. He is love. Everything about him is love. Even in the midst of discipline, it's still mm-hmm. a form of love. Because when we're disciplined by God, it teaches us to do the right thing. Yes. Yet he still clean us up from all that dirt. <laughs> still and have up. compassion and mercy upon us. But what I love about God is that um, he's patient. And then sometimes I got to sit back and say, just like the song goes, even me, even me, Lord, (laughs) you want me? Right. (laughs) Oh, God. You know, that'll bring me to tears. They coming down now, Lord Jesus. Let them come. Let them come. come. Okay, because when you think about what you done did, where you came from, how rough it could have been, how much worse life would have been. But God jumped in. He sent his angels down right there in the middle, and he saved your little ridiculous tail from whatever it is that you was trying to do. And in the name of God, he humbled you, and he he had mercy upon you. Right? And then he showed his love upon you when he lifted you up out of that out of that vessel out of that cave out of that place of darkness and he said i'm mm. still here for you now rise mm. rise mm-hmm. out of this depression rise mm. out of this position of, of hopelessness and come to me because i have greater mm. for you oh my god how many times i've gotten home and 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 just cried on my knees and said lord i thank you because you even me like you know i don't make all the best decisions i still be out here doing low things you know what i'm saying but i'm like it, it may not be in the form that i you're doing it but we all do little that's why he has given us his grace and mercy i'm proud for it and sometimes we, when the we pockets is low no we ain't on time no more we on grace and mercy but not even just the grace and mercy. You get your quail and manna too. Let that money be gone. He still feeds you. He feeds Come you, on. your family, Come and on. everything else. Uh, Lord, I didn't got down on my knees and say thank you for this quail and manna because I was all into square meals. You had a vegetable, a starch, and a meat. I was all about that vegetable, starch, and a meat. And it got to a point where I had no vegetable for that starch and meat. And I just had to say thank you for my quail and manna. <laughs> Whatever it is, it will be, it will be. And let my little itty bitty check that's so small that they don't even take federal taxes out of i'm still going to send you ties boom there you go jesus <laughs> and watch him work and you know what i do now just like you said you had said you always felt that you had a gift over you before i even started discipleship before i even wanted to learn more about god grow go grow deeper in god i always lived in this bubble sort of sense and it was like Whatever I wanted to do, I had the confidence to do, and God was going to make it happen. I'm a good person. I'm too good to people on this earth, and God will not forsake me. Sister, that was the attitude I had for years before I even wanted to grow deeper. And how far did it take me just to rely on God's word, just to rely on the Bible and how it was never a lie, just to rely on his greatness and his faithfulness. That took me so far, but only to a point, because now I can't claim to be ignorant. (laughs) At this point, now I can't hide behind that little Sunday school. You know, I got to work are you at that point in christ where you feel like your music was where he needed to take you 
in order to reach others? Or what is it that your music is? Like, I always felt like my music was my escape. Okay. It was my escape to better my family. It was my escape to be that inspirational person to help people out of their storm. I never, ever in my life would have ever thought that I would literally reach millions. So nobody ever mm-hmm. tell me that I was I was going to go viral. Could nobody tell me. And I remember That's people cool. used to literally just tell me, you got it, you got what it takes. I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to help you do that. <laughs> and none of those Where people were nowhere. Where are they? They were nowhere <laughs> to be found. They don't mean no harm. We we just gonna say bless their little hearts. <laughs> but you know what? I, I don't hold any grudges because they they seeing how far God has taken me and where I'm at today. Mm-hmm. And I still I still love them. You know why? Because my Bible tells me love conquers the multitude of many sins. Yes, it does. And how can I say I love God if I can't forgive my brother? Even and how would you it hurt? God? Well, well, how would you expect him to forgive you if you can't forgive? Oh, who wants to be in that bucket where God turns his ear off to you, does not hear your prayer and your cry? Right. I don't, I don't want that, and nor do I want the wrath of God. I don't felt it. I don't felt a little listen, piece of listen, it. Okay, you okay. You got a little wrath for God. You know what? <laughs> we over here just flowing. It's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting late, honey. <laughs> Real quick, tell me about your experience of the wrath of God. Let's talk more about your music. <laughs> so my music, I literally just dropped my um my new single. It's called We Cry Out. Um mm-hmm. this song literally I didn't even know that I was getting ready to lose my grandfather. But I remember um making a phone call telling my producer that my grandfather had had passed and he he asked me, he was like, well, you want to cancel it? I was like, no, nah, this is not the moment for me to cancel right now. I, I got to come. So I went, as I went, I was recording this song with tears rolling down my eyes. And I just had to do it. So when people hear the song, they hear the pain. They hear mm-hmm. the anointing. They, they, they hear it because of this is what I was going through. I had to cry out. Because on top of what I was already dealing with, I already didn't. Yeah, you know, I already didn't deal with the fact of losing my grandfather, my other grandfather, then my mm. uncle, and then my aunt. So, so that brokenness was still kind of there. And then, bam, my grandfather. Mm. So I put all that in my music. So my music, that's my escape. That that that's my peace. Amen. 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 And wow, that's the inspiration behind it. I I just love to hear the raw the rawness of the song and the in the voice and the emotion that's poured out over the track. Um, it's real interesting to me, um, how that all plays out. But as you involve yourself into these songs, into the business of music, um, are you f- having any difficulties or successes, um, as you grow in this industry? I mean, it's been difficulties and success, but right now I'm in the part of success because I'm still good. standing. Mm-hmm. I could have been on throat in a towel, even even when people stole from me, even while being on my deathbed. Like it's so it's so many so many things I could have literally gave up, but then I had to literally just think to myself, okay, God, this is what you blessed me with. Man didn't give me this. Mm-hmm. A woman didn't give it to me. You gave it to me. All right. And I can't right stop you until you tell me to stop. That's right. So I'm here mm-hmm. and I'm going to continue. I don't care how hard, how hard it got. I didn't even start now. I didn't have no connections. I didn't have no team. I didn't have no support. It was just me and God. And if I <laughs> made the it this salon, far, honey. <laughs> well, even hey, before man. the hair salon. Because a lot of people think that was my first time going viral. I actually went viral singing in my bedroom. Amen. I was with a pink shirt. That was 2017. I went viral in the hair salon chair 2018. Amen. But yeah, I thank God for it all. Thank Twice. For it all. And see, that's right. how God works. Because he wants everybody to know, ain't nobody do this but me. Now give me my but glory. But me, period. Give me and my he, glory. He already know from me. <laughs> Listen, God. 
you already know I'm on your team. I wouldn't dare allow no man to get the credit, period at all. Amen. I don't care how much money presented in front of me. I don't care. People will tell you about me. I ain't. I don't do what I do for the fame. I don't do what I do for the money. I do what I do for the soul to win them to Christ. And that's what it is. Pure point blank. God said my gift will make room for me and is making room for me. And that's how I'm going to end it. That's how Amen. I need it. Amen. You know what I love about it? When we are set on these journeys, these God-sized journeys that we have no control of, but here we go walking down that aisle, letting God carry us. Um, you know, I like that we can stand resilient and that on the transition, the Lord provides. And so here you go with your faith set and firm. And God said, I'm going to take you and make you a sheep herder. That's what you're doing now. You you bring a sheep to the flock. And so he set you up in a position where he said, this platform right here is for your good. And I'm going to use That's you right. to reach the masses. I want to Period. use you who've lived through this life, who've, who've suffered, who has these experiences. You just experienced a crash course of life that I needed you to re- live so that you can do my work for the rest of your days. And so when mm. we sit here and we think about, oh, why, why, why? Just remember that in the later day, you will have the characteristics to stand before Christ and said, well, and he will say, well done if you're brave enough to be obedient and so miss banks i gotta give it to you honey because you like my faith is unwavered i will do all things through the lord and ain't nothing y'all can do to stop nothing. it I nothing love did it. you hear me nothing. i love it I love, I love the energy. She is on fire for God. Yes, Jesus. Always. Yes, Always. Jesus. Always. That is a beautiful thing. And I appreciate your energy this evening. Thank um, you so much for the having The funny thing is, girl, I want you to stay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking at the clock like, are you serious? <laughs> Sometimes I'm on the show and I'm like, hurry up, clock. <laughs> And I'm looking there like, are you serious? I thought we was only like 20 minutes in. That's why I said something earlier. Like, girl, I want to chat some more. So, oh, <laughs> but um, this is your time, actually, to share with our audience how they can reach you. Plug, plug, plug as best as you can. This is your moment to let everyone know how they can find you, how they can find your music, and how they can support. <laughs> First, I would like to say before I even get into that, thank y'all so much for listening in. Thank y'all for taking a moment out of y'all day, night to listen to us. But y'all can reach me on Instagram, The Real Quandra Banks, on Facebook, my fan page, Songbird Quandra Banks, Twitter, Quandra Banks, YouTube, Quandra Banks. That's how y'all can reach me. And go ahead and get the new single, We Cry Out. I promise you it's going to bless you. I promise you I'm just not saying this because I was the one that wrote the song. Well, all, also, my brother Terrence Thomas, shout out to him. We kind of helped each other, so we kind of done the song together. But listen, it's a powerful song. It's a healing song. So if you ain't never really got into a place where you really had to cry out, because so many times, y'all, we literally hold ourselves hostage we hold our own self sometimes hostage we 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 hold shackles on ourselves so much because we're, we don't free ourselves by speaking talking to god you know just really releasing who you are because he already know who you are he just mm-hmm. wants you to have that faith to come to him hey god it's me the liar the cheater the one who deals with homosexuality whatever it is that you're dealing with god wants you mm-hmm. to present yourself as that so he can free you amen because when we go to God lying, he, how can he accept you? How can he free you when you lie to him? We serve an authentic God. He's real. Ain't nothing about God fake. So why come to him fake? Absolutely. He said, come to my throne of grace boldly. Come to me boldly. So I just encourage y'all, let this be, cry out to God, a new cry. Amen. That is beautiful, honey. <laughs> beautiful um, and I'm not going to add to it or take away <laughs> so we're going to leave it right there <laughs> right there where the Lord meant for it to be left um, every time I get a guest on the show I always want to ask them what is your favorite Bible verse for the week and please yes God mm-hmm. Psalms 91 
Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus. I got another thing. Shadow of the Almighty. Yes, I will say it the Lord. Lord. You are my refuge and my my fortress. My My God God in you, I I will trust. Yes. You are your girl since middle school. (laughs) (laughs) Period. Since middle school. school. Okay, so I got another family member because when I get my Psalm 91 family (laughs) members up in here. (laughs) With that thousand falling at my side. I got a song. What's so funny? I I, I wrote a song, um, Psalms 91, off that scripture. It won't be on my album, though. It won't be on my album. It'll be on the next one. Well, I might you drop, it drop it. that but thing. Yeah. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that. <laughs> yes, oh, honey. My grandmother put that scripture on me in middle school. I was, I was, first of all, my family's from California. Why did my mother send me here by myself with no cousins and siblings? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but my little light-skinned short tail was getting bullied left and right. My my grandmother put that dag on prayer on me, honey. <laughs> I was on some a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand hey. at my right hand. But, but none of those things come on. Not the dwelling. Okay. Oh. <laughs> None of y'all right here with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you start speaking that word on your bullies. They don't know how to take it. So, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. you ain't got to be no slick talk. Put that word on your bullies. <laughs> they get ready for it. Okay. They're they, trembling. They're going to be. Demons start trembling. Do you hear me? How about it? Clocking like your computer waiting to load. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be spazzing out like, oh, I'm, let me leave them alone. Exactly. Walk away. <laughs> Walk away. So you catch these Holy Ghost hands. Amen. Because <laughs> they are holy. Okay. They are holy. And my God was opening earth, putting you in the middle and closing Ooh. it back up. My God was following oh, you with the border. Okay. My God is a thing of God. So you better watch out. <laughs> Yes, I I tell people my God don't play about me, so don't play with me because my God don't play about me. No, he don't. No, he don't. Don't let you send up a prayer. (laughs) You got the extension. Y'all, y'all didn't know you had an extension. So (laughs) there it is. Oh God, I ain't even about to see her, but. All right, amen, amen. But I am so grateful to have you here with us on this show, Miss Conjure. Thank you so much um, for having me. Honey, we're gonna call this part one. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> we got to have you back again. Um, so we can um uplift some of these young women and some of these young men um that are listening. And for all of our listeners of age, <laughs> hopefully, um, this interview this evening was able to touch you in a, in a responsible place and that you can grow beyond uh, where you were yesterday. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. Kwanja, we make a habit of playing our, our music, um, not our music, but our guest music um, at the end of the show. Um, before we do that, we got to close it out. Before we do that, I would like for you to, quickly give us the inspiration behind We Cry Out. I know you mentioned it earlier, but just for the people that's just tuning in, let them know where We Cry Out came from briefly. We Cry Out came from a place of pain Mm -hmm. that I could not take it no more. And I wasn't going to stop pulling at his garment until he answered me. Oh, Jesus. I had to literally... Because so many times, like, and I'm going to just say this, and, and I'm going to be done with it, but so many times, y'all, we literally hold on to so many things, and we try to make it look like we're not going through anything by by the makeup, by the clothes, mm-hmm. by, by so many things, our appearance, but on the inside, we're broken, and I was broken, even ministering, even worshiping, I was still broken, and I told mm-hmm. God, God, enough is enough. I'm crying. I laid all at your feet because you can handle it way better than I can. So that's where that came from. Amen, amen. And listeners, how can they find We Cry Out? Because we're not playing that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they can find that on all digital outlets. 
iTunes, Amen. Spotify, Amazon, Amazon Music, Google Play. Go get it. It's yours. Amen. Go get it. Amen. We're actually going to play Endure the Pain. Tell me a little bit about that. God woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> had me writing. <laughs> he wouldn't let you sleep. <laughs> would not let me sleep. Don't you hate it? But he wake I, I up just, oh, well yeah. rested, inspired the word. Man, that's, that's sacrifice. That's a sacrifice. <laughs> I but I, I, I told God, I, God, I'll, I'll endure the pain. So follow you. And he, mm. God just asked me, "You really ready for this? Are you going to endure it? Okay. Let, let, let me, let me, let me put this test on you. Let me, let me throw this at you. Was I'll it a joke test? I've been past the jewel test. Oh, Jesus. She said we done did that a long time ago. <laughs> Listen, when I first opened up, and this is no lie, when I first opened up my Bible, when I even realized how to open up a Bible and read, Job was my first, first book. And I used to get so afraid because when God showed me things to read, I found myself going through those things. Mm-hmm. And when I read Job, I lost everything. And, and I put the Bible there. I didn't want to read no more. I didn't want to read no more. So we go through that from time to time where well, we have a conflict of crisis. And um, sometimes we're angry. Sometimes we're confused. Sometimes we're sorting things out. It, it's a number of reasons why we, we take a break. Because it don't never last. <laughs> it don't never last. And we don't need to go back into that place. But I thank you for uh, for sharing about Endure the Pain. I want to close this show this evening with a prayer for you and our listeners. And so let's take it to God. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in grace. We come to you, Lord God, saying thank you for our listeners. Thank you for the progress you've made in our lives. And thank you for the angels that surround us. Please, Lord, continue to bless Miss Banks. Continue to lift her up high and let her music reach all it needs to be heard. Let her bring more sheep to your flock. Let her be the inspiration behind all things melodic. Let her be the reason why people are saying, I love you, Lord. I want the vessel to shine bright in her. And I'm asking in your name that you make that work, Lord God. Let our listeners be available and let them understand that here on Positive Power Double XI, we are serving you, Lord. We are members of you and we are grateful to be a part of your number. Please, Lord, let us never be forget- forgotten. Always forgive us and never let the enemy come against us. In Jesus' name, we are thankful, grateful, and we Thank love you. Jesus. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. 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 Well, Kronja, I want to thank you again for being here with us. I hope that you can come back soon um, or even be in the studio whenever um, COVID permits <laughs> so we can do some live tapings and, and yes, actually ma'am. see you sing on person. That would be beautiful. But thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Amen. Yes, ma'am, amen. You be blessed, okay? And keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate you. Thank you so yes, much. Ma'am. And that's okay. it for us, Baltimore. We are grateful to have you here, all of our listeners, not just those in the location of Baltimore, but all of our listeners internationally. We thank you for being here with us on Positive Power Double XI. This is Kelly Holland letting you know to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Have a good night, everybody. And please hold on to enjoy the program.
Just to satisfy your name 